Welcome to the NMRBO update number six. This week is going to be a little bit different. I don't think I'm going to show as many of the steps in quite the detail that I did in past weeks. It also might be like this going forward just so I can get some of the work done. It is a bit hard working around the camera. I feel that it's slowing me down a bit with the current setup that I have. So once I get something a little bit better and it, I can shoot from more out of the way, it will go a lot quicker and not really be in my way as much. Also, sorry for the beard hair in the video. Uh, I didn't notice that until after. You get to see all the grays in my beard now, maybe, kind of. Anyways, on to the modeling. Right here you see me lay down some of the project glue because right now it is time for the roadbed. That little tool is a custom made tool. I use it for laying down gravel roads. It works really well to tamp them out and make them really flat before you glue them out. It also works really well as a glue spreader. You just gotta remember to clean all the glue off of it, otherwise you destroy a tool that took 30 seconds to build. So we're gonna change views real quick because I realized I was in the way of the camera basically that whole time. So the only difference that I had here was I didn't have to split the foam road bed like I did on the other side to go around the corner. So all you do is basically you just lay it down and pin it down. It's pretty simple with this stuff. You don't have to sand any of the edges or do any of that other fun stuff. I, I like this a lot more than the cork road. So now we just pin it down. If you're using the same glue that I am, this Liquid Nails Project Glue, you don't weigh it down at all. The nails will do that just fine. If you do decide to weigh it down with this foam, you risk getting a couple of low spots in it because it will keep some of the memory for a little while. After I laid down the roadbed, I ended up doing the siding after that. This is pretty simple as well. You know, you just cut at an angle and if there's any gaps in between the foam, that's not gonna be a big deal. Once the track is over it, you'll just end up filling it in with ballast. The other thing you can do is you can put a little bit of glue in between there just to take up some of that negative space, but it's not needed. I chose to do it later, but if you wanna skip that, that's perfectly fine. So now for a bit of important pre-planning. You gotta make sure you drill the holes for your switch machines ahead of time. I forgot to do this on my main layout for like eight switches and it was really a pain to come back and fix later. Even if you're gonna do ground throws or something like that, I'd suggest drilling the hole anyway. You can always fill it in with a plug from down below and ballast over it and you'll never see it. And then if you ever decide to go with any kind of electric switch, you just pull that plug out of there and you have a hole for the rod it's much easier you'd also do a remote throw switch but uh, you know it's up to you just I suggest drilling the hole ahead of time so here are the switch machines that I use they're the Walther's switch machines with the built-in decoders I really like them they're pretty cheap they're really easy to set up and they have the ability to give feedback to the layout via those side switches, I can make a change on the fascia with a button and that will actually feed back to JMRI. In the future, I'll do a video on how I set that up. If you wanna use them for power routing, you kinda of lose out on the ability to do that. You just kinda of gotta decide what you want. Personally, I'd much rather have that feedback and run a bunch of uh, keep alives instead of running the frogs that switch the power routing. So now to lay the track. I'm going to show you a real quick tip. If you're using the N-scale rail joiners on HO, I suggest you save a little bit of old crappy track like this. You file it down to a point and you can use it to spread the rail joiners. So here I am really sticking to what I said earlier about only showing you the finished parts of most of the steps. You know, whatever. Moving on, I'm gluing down the track right here, and this is a pretty simple step. Once you know where it's gonna be, uh, you just put down the glue, stick the track on, put the nails through, and if it's anything like this flex track, it's gonna try and flip all over the place. 
if it's like the uh, micro engineering track that's not a big deal it holds its shape really well so it just kind of depends on what track you're working with so once you get the track down and where you want it to go you just kind of nail it in place like I'm about to do here So next is on to laying down the switch and you know I know a lot of people are really worried about this type of thing and I understand why. It is a bit nerve wracking to do but it's also pretty simple to do. The one thing you just got to make sure you don't do is get any of the glue in the moving parts of the switch so I tend to just do the edges and that's about it. So now that everything is glued down, I decide to weight it down. This step is probably not needed, but uh, for something like the switch, I like to do it just so it gets a real good press fit on there. So now, with a little bit of movie magic, I have all the track laid down and time for a quick roll test, and it rolls really well. So now I'm down to putting ground texturing down. I subscribe to the Luke Towen method of this. Well, actually this is my first time doing it, but it comes out looking really well. Basically it's just dirt from outside sifted into different grains and then glued down after you put it through a stocking. So now I'm on to placing trees, and I gotta say, the trees that Walther sent for this are just not that great. They're made by Nock, and they end up looking really fake. Since I have to use a couple of them, I think I'm gonna just figure out how to put them onto this hillside here and have them sticking up over a bunch of super trees or something like that. I figured out how to make them look better by just sticking a bit of clump foliage on them. It really just makes them look that much better, but they kind of lose what they originally were, so I don't want to do that for every tree. Right here at the top, you can kind of see the gluey mess of the trees. So I have everything kind of placed where I want it, at least for the uh, Walther's trees. And I kind of decided that Right below where you see that plaster, I'm going to have that kind of be a grassy hillside and then from about that point up is going to be just a bunch of super trees in there, kind of shrouding in a couple of the other Walther's trees. So you kind of get a little bit of variation on the canopy. And now we're on to static grass, one of the most shocking changes you can have for your entire layout. So as you can see, I didn't film a lot of this. Uh, I just kind of did it. I think I was also chatting with a friend on Google Meet, so I was showing him how I did certain things, and since my phone is also my video camera, I couldn't film it at the same time. I already have a bunch of the static grass down, and I also have put on some of the fine leaf litter that I make. I basically just go outside and grab a bunch of dried dead leaves and throw them through my blender or coffee grinder, whatever is handy at the time. You just gotta make sure to wash it pretty well afterwards, but it shouldn't really harm anything. I'm just gonna jump forward a bit to where I am at the end of this week. I have the static grass down and a lot of the uh, underbrush done on the hillside. 
Next week, I think, is going to be ballast because I'm still waiting on the trees from Midwest Model Railroader. Also, another cool thing that happened this week is I was scrolling through an email from Walther's and I happened to see some of my photos in there from Instagram. Uh, I also have an Instagram now under the same name, Boulder Creek Yard. If you want to see quick little updates and previews of certain things, go ahead and follow me there. I'll talk to you later. Boulder Creek Yard out.